Hello, everyone, and welcome to the new season of the Purposeful Life Show with your host, Adrian Starks. I'm excited to share some new updates of the show with you, starting with a new look, sound, and energy, as well as a variety of guests coming aboard with intriguing topics of conversation. I hope you enjoy the new level of energy that will be brought to the show. Thank you for all of your support since the very beginning in 2019. Wow, it's been three years already? (laughs) Because of you, the Purposeful Life Show is now in the top 5% of all podcasts globally, and we aim to get it into the top 1%. Continue listening to the show and share it with others. You can also now listen to the show on my Facebook page at Adrian Starks, where you can comment in real time and communicate with me about your aha moments. Thank you again for all of your support. And let's make this one hell of a year and be purposeful about doing that. Wishing you all much love and success. We have all watched a superhero or a super shiro movie in our lifetime. There was a sense of awe and fascination watching them go through the moments of doubt, ridicule, and even fear and knock down the challenging barriers to save the day. They possessed a superpower very unique to them, and we wanted to be just like that person. What if you are? What if you discovered your superpowers and were able to knock down the barriers of your challenges and limitations? Could you do more and have more in your life? Stay tuned to our new episode on the Champion Up podcast with special courageous creator guest, Vanessa Canavero, the superpower that breaks through barriers. Hi, my name is Adrian Starks and welcome to the Purposeful Life Show on the Champion Up podcast. This podcast is for the courageous creators wanting to create a life of meaning, adventure, and fulfillment all while helping to make the world a better place. I'm happy you're here, and if you're new to our show, make sure to give us that five-star rating and subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes. Also, connect with us on Facebook and Instagram at Champion Up. It is always that one idea that could be your breakthrough. It's time to step into your courage and believe the champion in you. Welcome to the Champion Up Podcast, a purposeful life show. My name is Adrian Starks, and I'm your host, and I'm excited to have you back for another amazing and encouraging episode. Before we get started, make sure to get this episode by downloading it onto your phone. You can do it through any podcast platform. Give us that five-star rating and subscribe to the show because you do not want to miss out on this encouraging content coming to you weekly. Today is an amazing episode, and we are going to talk about being a superhero in your life. And I think a lot of us could use that. Yes. Just don't watch the movies about superhero. You can actually create your own by being that superhero. We have a wonderful guest on today and her name is Vanessa Canavero. And Vanessa, can you say hello to our audience? Hello, everyone. Well, hello, Vanessa. We're happy to have you in the show. And a little bit about Vanessa here. There's a lot about Vanessa, but we're going to go a little bit about it now. Vanessa says that we're all here to help each other along has been the foundation of Vanessa Canavero's life. Once a teen single mom, she is now the mother of three grown sons, a published author of three successful books, and the co-author of an Amazon international bestseller. Her life's passion is to help others understand their own superpowers in order to break through the barriers and have been holding them back. First, they must realize those fences aren't real. Dream big is Vanessa's theme, but always dream bigger is her goal. Vanessa, welcome to the show. I am so thrilled to be here. I am so thrilled to be here, Adrian. It's just, it's an honor, honestly. And I just want to say something really quick before we start talking about me, because I want to talk about you a little bit. First of all, (laughs) I just want to thank you for leaving such um, a loving impact on the world with what you do with these podcasts. As you said, you know, you. I love the superhero thing, but you are a superhero by doing that. And I think that we need more people leaving a positive love impact on the world than the blemishes that we're seeing sometimes that are popping up in social media. So thanks so much, first of all, for doing podcasts like this, but for you know, to pouring your heart into something that is so important, leaving a positive vibe everywhere you go. So thank you, my friend. You're welcome. <laughs> and thank you, Vanessa. And I was not ready for that, but I am <laughs> blushing. Thank you so much. Oh, absolutely. Yes. And you're right. I mean, we need more positivity in the world. The negativity is all around us and it's not solving any problems. And I find it very interesting that people love to engage in negativity 
and jump on it. But when we have people putting out positivity, it's like, we need to jump on that. We need to be a part of that and let that be part of our lives. So this show today is about the superpower that breaks through barriers of those negative things in your life. And so Vanessa is very powerful about doing that. And she's indeed a superhero. So Vanessa, we're going to jump right into this conversation off the cliff, and we're going to have our courage to go into this interview, and we're going to talk about your journey. You're an author of three books, which I will discuss a little later, Mm -hmm. and a co-author of an international best-selling book. At what age did you decide that you wanted to be a writer and author? I was six, and it's something that I've always wanted to do because, first of all, and I love my husband. He's amazing. I'm just going to put a plug in there for Tony because he is just like the best, most supportive person ever. But uh, he he's always said, you know, you like live in a dream world. And I do. <laughs> when I was a kid and I was six years old, I was in a fairy tale all the time. That's just how I lived. Mm-hmm. Or I was in a musical because I love music so much. So um, mm-hmm. when I was six years old, I started writing my own little books and do my own little illustrations and such. And they were about of course, animals, but about a little girl who always wanted to make friends, who always didn't or who didn't believe in herself. But through her animals, she found the power and the courage to become whoever she wanted to be, whether it was a princess, Mm. a queen, um, Wonder Woman, because Wonder Woman and Batman, oh my gosh, Batman, they were my heroes when I was a kid, right? That was mine too. I love Batman. (laughs) And so that's kind of where it all started when I was six. And I knew that one day I was going to write a book. And I was going to be an Mm. author. And that's where it started. Just a little girl at six. A little girl at six. She knew at one age she was going to write a book. Now, when we're young, we all have these ideas and fantasies and dreams. And many adults are probably saying, yeah, I had that too when I was a little kid. And yeah. But Vanessa stuck with it. It took her 31 years later, but she wrote her first book, I Want a dragon. I actually have a friend and her daughter loves dragons. So I have to tell her about this episode to listen to it. But And also to read that book, I Want a Dragon. What was the source of that inspiration, Vanessa? And why did it take that long? Okay. Well, first of all, I have three sons. So raising three boys, like there's so many stories I can draw from just from those three guys <laughs> because they were so funny and and the little uh, situations they would get themselves into. So I Want a Dragon actually came from my youngest son, Cole. And we were talking about his birthday. And I said, okay, honey, what do you want for your birthday? And he was right around seven years old, five, you know, between five and seven, somewhere in there. And he said, mom, I want a dragon. And I kind of just, you know, I'm always making little folders of little things that might be a fun story title or a fun concept for a book. And I've been doing that forever. And I thought, wouldn't that be a fun little kind of um, story about a moral, about somebody who wants everything all the time, but really the thing that Mm -hmm. they want is a dragon. And that's where the title of I Want a Dragon actually came from. And um, with it being my first actual published book, um, it was a very exciting uh, process going through that because first of all, 31 years it took me to write my first book to actually physically get it out there. And the reason why I hadn't done it before was because I, first of all, I didn't didn't think I had the confidence or the courage to do it because mm. I didn't think I was good enough yeah. because I was unsure of my talents rather than just taking the leap to do it. I prolonged my destiny, I guess, for 31 years because of fear. And that's essentially what it was. Because of fear and you prolonged it. And it happens to a lot of us when we just don't believe in ourselves. And we feel like, well, maybe this is not for me. And maybe I should think about something else, which is why I truly admire you because journeys take time and you never stopped believing in that vision. I mean, you had it there. Some people have the vision and they just give up on it, but you just procrastinated. You said the vision's here. Maybe just not now. Maybe I won't be able to do it, but you kept that vision, which is very powerful. And speaking of journeys, Vanessa, you were a teen single mom. How difficult was that for you? And what were some of your challenges along that path of being a teen mom? Well, being a teen mom, first of all, I I grew up on a farm outside of a very small town in Saskatchewan. And uh, I had my oldest son when I was 17 years old. So I was just going into grade 12. And I had him uh, actually right around Christmas of of grade, well, it was December 12th when I was in grade Mm -hmm. 12. And um, first of all, it was, of course, difficult being a single mom. I've got the most amazing supportive family. My parents were just miracles, right? Going through something like this, because when you're a teenager, you already have all the other issues of being a teenager, just trying to fit in, being accepted, Um, the self-conscious issues you have, but having a baby in that mix, you know, it was difficult. My parents were, are amazing people and uh, they definitely carried me through it. But when I had Aaron, it was, I was going through a very tough time in my life. I was um, 
broken, emotionally and mentally broken, just from a relationship I was I had been in and I was still in. And mm-hmm. um, honestly, when Aaron, when I found out I was pregnant with Aaron, of course, I was scared because of what people were going to say, what was going to happen. My future changed at that moment. I couldn't go and, you know, follow that plan I had. I, I wanted to be a veterinarian. I couldn't follow that plan because now I had this other responsibility of somebody who needs me, actually needs me. Mm-hmm. And because of knowing that somebody was coming into my life that needed me so much, Mm-hmm. I had to figure it out. If I wouldn't have had my oldest son, honestly, the psychological state that I was in, I don't know if I'd be here right now. Aaron has been a blessing in my life in so many ways. But definitely when I was a young person, Aaron mm-hmm. definitely carried me through to the next stage of my life. Absolutely. I love that. You said that, you know, you had to get through it. And that's something that's a very powerful tool for people to have when they're going through a challenge. It's very impressive. And you and I have a lot in common. You mentioned that you also wanted to be a veterinarian. So did I. You said that you like Batman. So do I. (laughs) Wow. I think there's just something going on with this conversation today and I'm just loving it. But not to deter away from this powerful information you just gave us about being a single mom. For any single parents out there now, or couples with children, what action step could they take to knock down the walls of hesitation or holding back from going for their dream? Because I know it happens with them. And I know there's responsibilities of being a parent. I understand that you just can't continue to do what you've always done. However, a lot of people are just giving up and saying, you know what? I've got children now. No need for that anymore. What action step could they take or what advice could you give them? I think first of all is stepping back and looking at that thought process, thinking, okay, what is really holding you back? Is it the fact that now you're a new parent or you're a parent? Or is it the fact that you think you're settled in your life? Or are you just scared? Because Mm. I find that fear is the biggest motivating factor that we all have to deal with in our life. Mm -hmm. It is the biggest motivating factor. And you mentioned that, is it fear? Are you just scared? Or what's really holding you back? The reason why this is so important is because you are a very successful mother with three grown sons and raising boys, let me tell you, is indeed a superpower. (laughs) (laughs) My mom had me, she has two boys, but I was the oldest one. And she said, I was a doozy. She says, you were all over the place and I had to chase you and you were climbing on things thinking you were Batman or Superman. So I gave her quite the challenge. And so for you, I want to commend you for raising three amazing sons and for being an amazing parent, but just as you mentioned, being an amazing human being and showing up here and developing your superpowers for the world. So you said a lot of things that touched me, Vanessa. And one statement that you made was this. And our audience, I want you to listen closely here. I just got tired of reliving the same life over and over again. Let's think about that. Got tired of reliving the same life over and over again. So for those listening, Are you still getting the same results over and over again? Same relationships, same concerns, same worries. Vanessa, this is powerful. Do you recall when you had this moment of epiphany? We call it like you just say, like, enough is enough. Do you recall when it happened or where you were when you just decided that, you know what? I am not going to go through this ever again. And, you know, I'm going to say it was about six years ago, and I know that's so recent, but I think mm-hmm. that was when I had the realization that we're just, we just, or I just seem to be living the same life over and over again with different situations, different people, right? Different jobs that are popping in, but it's essentially the same cycle that I'm on. And if I'm looking to have something different, something more productive, something that's going to have more of an impact on the world, on my family's life, I need to change something up. And totally, yeah. it was my my thinking, my thought processes, my fear. And I, like I said, fear plays such a huge role in your life and you don't even realize it. And it was mm-hmm. looking at, at those fears and looking at my thoughts and thinking, okay, why am I feeling this way? Am I excited or am I scared? Because sometimes those two feelings mm-hmm. feel like the same thing. Am I putting my guard up because I want to, you know, I'm trying to keep myself and my family safe? Or am I using it as a crutch? Because I'm saying I'm trying to keep myself and my family safe. That's why I'm not taking the next step into what I really authentically need to be doing with my life. And I think when you realize that you are on a constant cycle, and if you want something to change in your life, you need to break that cycle by changing your habits and your thought patterns. That's when change occurs. Changing your thoughts and patterns of habit is when change occurs. That is powerful. One thing I also love that you said is that you found the reason to make that change. The key word here being reason and not excuse. 
how many of us have used excuses for why things are the way they are instead of finding the reasons to create that change? And so this is how you rebuilt your life. That's a superpower. And speaking of superpower, what is a superpower actually, Vanessa? And when did you discover yours? Okay, superpower. So everybody has a superpower. There is not one person who doesn't have one. I think it's something that I think we all know within our heart, something that first of all, we're crazy good at, but something that can actually leave a positive mark on the world. I mean, that that's what your superpower is. It can be love. It can be that you're caring. It can be that you just you love to give to people. It can be that you have the gift of music the gift of art. Mm. You're crazy awesome at some sports that you love. It's that passion that you have in you that just makes you sparkle. And it's something that, you know, you're born with and you carry with you, but it's got to be something that, you know, you're willing to hang on to because I know sometimes education system sometimes takes that out of you because they want you to fit Mm -hmm. in a certain box. As you get older, you think that, well, maybe that's not good enough, or maybe that sounds dumb, or maybe, you know, somebody will laugh because this is what I want to do and what I honestly feel like um, is my gift to give to the world. But I think it's something you need to hang on to. And it's a, it's something that we are all born with and it's our strength, not our weakness. So think about what is that one thing that you have in you that, you know, first of all, makes you feel like you shine but secondly, can leave a positive impact on this world. Makes you feel like you can shine and secondly, leave a positive impact on this world. And you mentioned also too, the passion inside of us that makes us sparkle. Wow. So everyone, you have a superpower. What is it? Think about that for a moment. What is your superpower? Vanessa, you mentioned that you use these superpowers to break down your own barriers. Why do people have barriers up and what can they do to start learning how to take those things down? I think we have barriers up because of past experiences. As we all know, we have okay. was anywhere from 60 to 80,000 thoughts a day, they were saying, mm-hmm. right? 95% right. of those thoughts are thoughts we thought yesterday. So it's mm-hmm. nothing new that's coming in. And probably 80% of those thoughts are thoughts that reflect back to the past or project you into the future, mm-hmm. not actually being in the now, right? Okay. So I right. think that, you know, if we start just paying attention to those thoughts that we have every single day and looking at them and saying, okay, are they actually helping me or are they hurting me? Hmm. That'll start bringing those barriers down because a barrier is a self-defense mechanism. And it's something that we've probably uh, taken with us over our lifetime because of a way we had to protect ourselves. So we put our guard up, Hmm. right? We hold ourselves up because we don't want to look bad. We don't want to sound bad. We don't want people to think that we don't know what we're talking about. We don't want people to think that we're ugly, right? People to think that we're not smart, all of those things. But when we let those barriers down, we show our authentic self. That's when we can actually start moving forward. Is this what it means to to have vulnerability when we let our barriers down and we show our authentic self? Absolutely. You feel vulnerable, you feel naked. Yeah. Right. And that's a scary thing. I mean, it's scary to feel like you're out there, you know, um, out in the open, leaving your heart out there. It's a scary thing because you feel like you don't have control when in fact you have ultimate control because your emotions and that good part of you that wants to come out is the thing that, you know, is driving you and is probably your superpower is what it is. Right. And it's your. I was just going to say that. Yeah. yeah. That part of you is part of that superpower that you're holding back. And back to vulnerability, you know, we're always taught to protect yourself, be careful, don't let people get too close, you know, watch out for them. And all these things get seeded into us and we start keeping ourselves away from people. And that's not allowing us to show our superpowers, which I love that you're talking about here. Your quote, and there's a lot of quotes Vanessa has, she's full of amazing information. <laughs> you guys have to meet her. Okay, so the quote is this, the only limits we have are the ones we give ourselves. Our talents are our superpowers. Use them to change the world. Wow. So we can actually change the world, our superpowers? I I totally believe that. I totally believe that one person at a time. We are, you know, we're just a small blip in this earth. If you think about it, I mean, there's like there's mean, we're just a small blip on this earth, but we can leave such a ginormous footprint just by doing little things every day and having a positive impact on something, on one Mm -hmm. person every single day, whether that's through speaking to somebody, smiling, something you've written that's inspired somebody. If I think, you know, every morning when I wake up, my first thought is how can I positively impact this world today? What's one thing I can do to make this place better Mm -hmm. than what it was yesterday and to leave my mark? And I, I love that. And I think if everybody has that thought process, okay, what can I do to make this world better today? It doesn't have to be something crazy big, but I think it's a little steps combined together with a group of people that can authentically change this world, that can make us something into something that I guess um, the world needs right now. The positive, the uh, uplifting momentum 
that the world and, and there, there is a change happening right now, but the momentum has to be a positive one. We look mm. at the positive side of things. I love that. And we can change the world. And let's get back to the superhero because superheroes do change the world. They save the world, right? Yes. And I think that when we think about saving the world, really when we learn to save ourselves and to really express ourselves, we can actually impact the world on a global scale. And that can help save the world from, I believe, destruction. Because if we focus so much on negativity and not enough on what we can do to impact our lives and those around us, then we won't be able to contribute to this world. And I love the fact that you're talking about the superhero perspective and being one. And back to the books, you know, I mentioned earlier that you had the first book, I Want a Dragon. Then two years later, the second book came out, Zero the Superhero, which is a children's book. And what inspired this book, Vanessa? My middle son, Taylor. Like those boys are just so much entertainment and just a huge source of everything. <laughs> but um, yeah, Zero the Superhero is about a young guy. Our our middle son, Taylor, he, he oh my gosh, they, they said that middle child syndrome, Taylor had it. He was... He did everything. There is nothing that any kid could do that Taylor has not tried because he, <laughs> he, he was the risk taker when he was a kid. And uh, But he was always that guy that was out there to help the next kid, right? He was always that one stepping mm-hmm. in in the schoolyard if something wasn't going well. He was that, you know, that big caring dude. And Zero the Superhero is about a young guy who has this wild imagination who uh, thinks there's evildoers in his town. And because of his imagination, he's fighting all these evil evildoers. What he's trying to do is keep his town safe. But what he's actually doing is he's fighting a bully. And he's trying to help this bully see that what she's doing is not cool. And that's where Zero the Superhero came from, was from Taylor. Wow. Powerful. Then you continued on with your superpowers of creating. And you moved into this historical fiction world right after the children's book, which is hard to do to go from one genre to the next. And it took you about a few years. Then Lions and Lambs was born. And this book has been getting some raving reviews. And I'm like looking at, I'm like, wow, five stars. Like, how did you do that? How did you jump from children's books to all of a sudden I'm going to do historical fiction? Well, you know, and that's just it. I think a lot of authors feel like they need to stay and stick within the same genre because that's what they're good at. But for me, Mm -hmm. I I was, I always have these book ideas bouncing around in my head. And so when of lions and lambs happened, it took me three and a half years to write it. And that was steady writing every day. You know, I would spend, that was my job. I would write my books. I'm such a historical buff. I love history. I love, oh my gosh, I just love everything about history because I think where we've come from kind of gives us a direction of where we're going. And so as I was writing of Lions and Lambs, it it was a lot of historical research, but it was pulling out so much out of me. I think a lot of frustrations because it's it's not a it's not a dark book or anything like that, but it's so different than the the um, children's book genre that there's actually more of me poured into that book uh, because it's such a different, I guess, a different vehicle uh, for me to write in. And so of Lions and Lambs is, I was very creative in having to write it because it was from, for an adult. It wasn't for a kid because a kid's imagination can, can, you know, pick up on things and, and just keep running. Whereas an adult, you have to give them the visual story as you're writing it. So it was just a little bit different. It was a little bit deeper for me. Wow. You're also a co-author of the international best-selling book, Still Beautiful. So the journey just keeps going on. You keep creating. So I want to remind our audience here. From a teen single mom, a mom that's raised three grown boys. She has continued on this journey to build the most uplifting tools for us to read from and to learn from. And there is no excuse. She mentioned earlier, she had a reason to rebuild her life. She got tired of reliving these things over and over again. You can do the same too. So now this book's still beautiful. The international best-selling book is getting so many raving reviews. I love the title, Still Beautiful. It makes me think of no matter what scars we may have from battles of life, we're still beautiful. Is that something that you thought about when you were a part of this book about being still beautiful and missed challenges? Or was there something else that you were thinking of when you contributed to this book? Well, first of all, this book is actually based on the life story of burn survivor Kelly Farlado. And mm-hmm. Kelly's a great friend of mine. She's an awesome lady. She's a motivational speaker. And she speaks all around uh, North America talking about um, the struggles she had growing up with these scars that she had, right? Kids mm-hmm. bugging her, bullies, that type of stuff. And that's, you know, the emotional self-confidence issue she had. So when she did this book, it's a compilation of 23 different authors. And we talk about, each of our chapters talk about a struggle we've had in our life, something mm-hmm. that we've had to overcome. And I think the power in this book, first of all, is there is 23 different stories from different mm-hmm. walks of life, men and women. But somebody is going to be able to relate to one of those stories and understand it's okay. Exactly. I can do it. I can get past this. This is a moment in time. 
if Vanessa got past, you know, um, being bullied in school, having terrible um, thought processes about herself, terrible thoughts about harming herself, and she did it, and she went on to something different, and she's had these three amazing kids, she's got this incredible husband, and she has a life that she adores, maybe I can do it. And it mm -hmm. just helps people understand that they're not there by themselves, that we all have struggles we're going to get through. We just have to find a way to get through it. And whether it's reaching out to people we love or getting help elsewhere or getting help from within, you, you can do it. And this is where it's still beautiful is so powerful. It's, it's a movement. Oh, it's a movement. I love that. A movement of still being beautiful amidst the challenges and to take those challenges as experiences and let that be part of your beauty of what you show up in the world as. And that's the superhero power. You rebuilt your life multiple times. You say this. Mm -hmm. This is absolutely amazing. To the audience member listening today, Vanessa, can they rebuild their lives? All the time. I think when we get stuck in the muck of something that's happening and, and we're dreading, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm going through this and this is so terrible. Understand, like I said earlier, this is a moment in time. A year from now, this probably won't even matter anymore. Maybe even next week it won't even matter. Right now, it seems like you're stuck in the muck and it's terrible. And, you know, I can't see a way out. But tomorrow's another day. And at any moment, you know, and this is what's really cool about life is that we're not just set in saying, okay, well, this is what I'm going to do now. Now I'm a single mom. I guess that's I'm going to be a single mom all my life. That's it. I'm done. There is no rule that says that. At any moment, you can pluck whatever idea you have out of thin air and hit reset and start over. You just have to make the decision to take that first step to, to start over. And that's the gift of every new day is that it's totally clean before you even get there. You decide what you want to put into it. And I love that, making a decision to start over. But most people, Vanessa, they are scared to start over. They think starting over is a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Is it not a bad thing? No, it's to start over. It is not a bad thing because why would you okay. want to stay where it's not working? That doesn't make any sense true. to me, right? <laughs> and again, it's that fear playing in there. I mean, I have worked so many years on on my mindset to pull all those fears or try to get all those fears out of my life that have impacted me negatively and kept me on the cycle. And a few, well, almost about a year ago, something pretty major happened in my life. And, and right away, you know, I, I thought, okay, I've got it together. I've got my thought processes figured out, right? I know I can move forward. I can do this. But slowly I found myself reverting back into the habits that I had before of, oh, what, what if this doesn't happen? Oh, no. Right? What if this affects us financially? Oh, what if people think this is dumb? I'm like, who am I to think I could do this? And I caught mm -hmm. myself. And that moment when I was feeling like I was stuck again, I, it was such a humbling feeling to know how quickly you can revert back to an old habit when you thought you've totally replaced it with what you've wanted. Mm -hmm. So we all go through it. But just understand that if you really want something more, you will find a way to make that something more happen. I love that. And what has been one of your greatest challenges, Vanessa? Oh my gosh. Like it's just totally been my thought processes, my um doubting myself. Mm -hmm. Self-doubt. I mean, that has probably that has been my biggest, my biggest issue is the fear of of looking uh, bad, the fear of mm -hmm. not being good enough, those kinds of things. Those have been my my biggest issue. And I think that if you know I had learned 20 years ago, what I know now, our lives would be very different. They probably would have been easier, but <laughs> I wouldn't be the person I am right now. And it wouldn't have shaped yeah. me into who I was. So self-doubt, that is probably the biggest thing, the biggest issue that I have to deal with. And I am constantly doing checks and balances throughout my day thinking, okay, why am I having this thought? Where is it coming from? Is it serving me or is it holding me back? Are those monsters real? Or is it something that I'm making up in my mind because I think somebody's thinking that or somebody's saying that or somebody's doing that? When in fact, it's me just doubting who I am and being afraid to take the next step. I love that you said that you're still doing the checks and balances because this is what happens with a lot of people that are leading out here in the industries in their field. They make it seem like they're so perfect and that they never have a problem and they never have any challenges. And this is a part of vulnerability, ladies and gentlemen, that we're talking about today of being able to show up and say, you know what? I still have some issues with this. I do too. I still have self-doubt. Yes. Adrian Starks, I still have self-doubt. I got to check that at the door and make sure I, I don't let it in and take over my life. And Vanessa's saying the same thing. And this is why she is a superhero, why she's on the show as a courageous creator, because she's willing to put herself out there to help the world in the midst of all that, show the world that she's human. In her words, we're human beings and we have to be able to build our lives and we can rebuild them over and over again 
if we have the reason to do so and not the excuse. Speaking of Vanessa, how can our audience get in touch with you? Well, first of all, I have two websites you can find me on, VanessaCanavero.com. That is my author website. And the dreambiglife.com, that's my coaching website. You can find me on both okay. those. And of course, on Facebook and all, I'm all over social media as well. Yes, she is. <laughs> she's not hard to find. And she's wonderful. Uh, just follow the social media pages. Go on, like her pages, follow, leave comments, let her know what you're thinking about, what our process of information. It's always important for everyone to know. That way we can all continue to help you guys out there and go to her website. Check that out as well. Those three books we mentioned, I Want a Dragon. Zero, the superhero, Lions and Lambs, and let's not forget the international bestseller, Still Beautiful. Make sure that you guys go out there and read those books because you don't want to miss out on the amazing things that are coming from that. And Vanessa, we have come to the time of the show called The Courageous Creator Question. Ooh. And this is a question that I love to ask, and our audience, they wait on it. What happens to the world if we all use our superpowers? If we all use our superpowers, there is going to be this one huge ball of happiness that's going to start rolling across the world. And we're going to see this change like nothing that has ever happened before. Can you imagine having a world that's filled with just this positive mindset? Can you imagine the limitless opportunities, first of all, that will be out there for everybody, not just the wealthy, not just the super smart, everybody, and the change that can happen? First of all, like in medicine in science and technology, in personal development, in human development, in education, in poverty, all these amazing things will happen because it's going to be just, just caring. The world will carry itself forward. I love that. Vanessa, thank you so much for joining our show today. You've been absolutely wonderful and such amazing energy. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. You're welcome, Vanessa. In Vanessa's words, dream big, but the goal is to dream even bigger. And how do we do that? We learn how to use our superpowers. What is your superpower? Vanessa said this earlier. Maybe it's smiling. Maybe it's hand gestures, hugging. Maybe it's being nice to people. Maybe it's writing, playing music. Who knows? You have a superpower that you should be using, but you got to take those walls down first. Stop hiding. Stop protecting yourself. Show yourself to the world. You do this by becoming your own superhero. I encourage you to go to Vanessa's website. Go to her social media pages so you can continue to follow and learn how to do that because it doesn't happen overnight. It took her journey to get to where she is, but she's going to help you get there sooner and it won't take you as long. So this is why it's important to learn from someone such as her. Until then, I encourage you all to be that courageous creator in your life. This is the Purposeful Life Show and the Champion of Podcasts with myself, Adrian Starks, and thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed our podcast today, don't forget to give us that five-star rating and subscribe to the show so you don't miss out on the powerful life-changing content on future episodes. Also, make sure to go to championup.net for even more life-changing content. Until then, I encourage you to be the courageous creator in your life.